Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. Washington is known for its high quality, abundant potato crops and we have many varieties to offer the world. In this episode, we're in the Skagit Valley talking all about red potatoes. We'll head to Mount Vernon and check out a popular breakfast spot, the Calico Cover. Then we'll hop in the kitchen to cook up a dish of our own. Mm -hmm. That is good. Then we're chatting about urban sprawl and seeing how it's impacting agriculture in our state. And we're seeing how some award-winning vodka is made using red potatoes. Do you ever feel like a mad scientist? Yeah, it's kind of fun. All that and much more on Washington Grown. Are you ready to cook me up? Okay, I don't have the hang of this. So this is where we get our water. <laughs> Cheers. Hopefully they won't eat my shoelaces. <laughs> Our first stop in the Skagit Valley is in Mount Vernon at Calico Cupboard. It's a breakfast and lunch spot that's been a local favorite for more than 30 years. We've been coming to Calco for about 25 years. It's so good. It's, it's a legend. We have family visit. We always have to come to Calico. We live in the Bellevue area, so we make the trek up because we like eating here so much. It's about almost an hour. Worthwhile, then. It is so worthwhile. Their food's so good. We love the cinnamon rolls. We come here probably three or four times a month. Calico offers a diverse menu with everything made from scratch, from the pastries to the sauces and spreads. Manager Norval Rogers says one of Calico's top priorities is providing high quality, tasty dishes using Washington grown ingredients. What are some of the most popular dishes? Our hashes are always a favorite. Yeah. Our sandwiches at lunchtime, baked goods, cream puffs, and cinnamon rolls. I saw those cream puffs. The cream puffs are like as big as my face. You guys use a lot of local Washington ingredients? We do. It's always been about, you know, the people around you, your neighbors. I mean, when I drive to work, I drive past the fields that do the milk. Yeah. You know, you do a different route and you see the potato fields. Some of the growers, they eat at the big top and they'll ask us to check whose bag of potatoes we got in the basement at the time. <laughs> That's awesome. Coming up, we're going into the kitchen with Chef Alyssa Burgess to cook up Calico's signature Skagit hash. It's a bed of our local red potatoes uh -huh. with broccoli, spinach, onions, garlic, and it's been one of our favorites for decades. We're still in the heart of red potato country and heading to Burlington to visit the Knutsons, a family farm that is six generations strong. First, Ron and Luann Knutson talk with me about the history of their family farm. Before the turn of the century, uh, my great-grandfather wanted to go where the grass stayed green and the flowers bloomed all year. And so they came into the uh, east coast of the United States and started for this part of the country and they got uh, partway across to Chicago, was robbed and lost all their money. And so they had six more boys there in Chicago. And as soon as that happened and they gathered some money, they moved on to the Skagit County and, and uh, did the homestead. And this part of the area, including ours, is uh, known as the, the best red potatoes in the continental United States. And so uh, it's a niche market for us. And because of that niche market, uh, uh, we're known throughout the United States and, uh, and our kids have uh, made sure that that happened, as you can see from the pictures, that uh, there's nothing that'll compare to it. Was it important for you to kind of pass down this legacy at Knutson Farms? It was. In addition to that, um, we're very religious people, and uh, the 11th commandment for us is, Thou shalt not sell the farm. <laughs> I so love that, it. That has been passed down from generation one. I wanted to know what Ron and Luann's daughter, Christy, thinks about the family farm. This is a big family. It is a big family. What's been instilled in us is um, the community is our family. Uh -huh. And whether it be the landlords or the people that come and help us work and get this crop harvested and planted and, and sold, or the neighbor that has been good to us. It's a very nurturing place to live, raise your family, and own a business. And it works. It does work. It does work. It's worked for six generations. 
What do you want uh, people who are eating your potatoes, what do you want them to think about when they have these potatoes on their plate? Um, we would like them to think about the fact that they're not just pretty, they're healthy. We raise them like we raise our children and it's exciting to watch them grow and pull them from the soil and see how beautiful they are knowing that we're getting the freshest, most wholesome product we possibly can ship out and share with other families. We're very proud of that, to put our name on the side of the box. Dan is the first member of the sixth generation to come back to the farm. So what made you decide to carry on the, the family tradition? To be honest, I think it's just in my blood. I was, I grew up here in a banana box from when I was just really <laughs> little. Uh, my mom was working on the line when yeah. I, she went into labor with me. I just feel like it's been so entrenched in me. I just, and I love it. So what's it like working with all of your family members? It's fun. Is fun it? and challenging at times, but a lot more fun than it is challenging. You're obviously pretty proud of, of what your family, you and your family do mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. If I wasn't proud, I wouldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, so these are... These are yellow potatoes. Okay. Should and we look at some reds? Yeah, let's go look at some okay. reds, what we're known for. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. I want to see what these babies look like. You know, I've done this enough. How do you feel about digging them up this I time? don't know. I'm not so sure. You Which one would hands? you? Yeah, I can do that probably. Okay. So, just find a plant. Yeah, what do you right think? There. Like this one here? It looks perfect. And just grab it down here. Uh huh. You yeah, the, grab it down there and just pull it up. Pitch I might fork. help you a little oh, wait. bit here. Look at that. Look at that. Yeah, that deep, beautiful red color. What do you want people, you know, young adults to know about farming? You know, I just. I just want them to know that there's there's a lot more that goes into it than just going to the grocery store. It's just amazing to think how much how much effort and how much time goes in. Yeah, it's good for people to know where their food comes from. It is absolutely it is. Do you know which major mineral Americans need the most of each day? Iron is a popular guess, but not correct. And you're closer if you guess sodium, but potassium ranks as the top mineral, with most Americans needing almost 5,000 milligrams each day. It's no secret that many Americans struggle with elevated blood pressure, which potassium-rich foods help to improve. But wait, there's more. Potassium also supports heart, muscle, and nerve function, and is critical for energy production. When asked about potassium sources, most people quickly recite bananas, but Potatoes trump bananas in potassium content. Because of their lower starch content, red potatoes are potassium kings, sporting almost a thousand milligrams in a single medium potato. Wrapped around potatoes' potassium-rich insides is a nutritious potato skin. The skin delivers fiber and health-supporting compounds called phytochemicals, giving color to the potato skin. Phytochemicals provide protection by keeping the potato safe from invading bacteria, fungi, and pests. When we eat the skins, we benefit by ingesting the phytochemicals, which in turn boost our own body's defenses. It's the circle of life in the form of a potato. The firm texture of red potatoes also makes them good for boiling or steaming and can be added to casserole, soups, and salads. At the supermarket, you'll see several varieties of red potatoes which can last for several weeks when stored in a cool, dark, and well-ventilated area. Whether you prefer red, purple, white, or brown potatoes, they all pack plenty of potassium and are available year-round. It's the circle of life. Coming up, we're back at Calico Cupboard to make one of their most popular dishes featuring red potatoes. It's been one of our favorites for decades. We're back at the Calico Cupboard in Mount Vernon. It's a must-stop breakfast and lunch joint with three locations, and customers say it's well worth it. We live in the Bellevue area, and so we make the trek up because we like eating here so much. It's so good. It's, it's a legend, you know. When we have family visit, we always have to come to Calico. Calico offers a diverse, made-from-scratch menu with everything from hashes and scrambles to cinnamon rolls and pies. 
Now we're stepping into the kitchen with Chef Alyssa Burgess to cook up Calico's customer favorite dish, the Skagit hash. Skagit Valley hash, that's pretty popular here, right? Yes, it is. And you, you love these babies right here. Yes, I do. <laughs> They're so pretty. They are delicious. Okay, what are we gonna do first? Our first step is to thinly slice our red potatoes. I will follow your lead. You can't mess it up because okay. they're potatoes. And these have already been pre-cooked. You have to do that, don't yeah, you? Yeah, helps them cook a lot faster. So tell me a little bit about the Skagit Valley red potatoes. I think they have a really creamy taste and they fry up really nice. They fry up nice. Next, we fry our potatoes in a little oil. So whenever I try to make hash brown, I can never quite get the brown, golden crispiness. I mean, what am I doing wrong? Hash browns are really hard to cook. It's <laughs> not just me. <laughs> just keep on adding some more oil and yeah, cook it up. Then we heat some garlic and oil in a skillet and start sauteing our veggies. Some broccoli, onion, mushroom, tomato, and spinach. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be so good. Yeah. Okay. We'll do a little more. Spinach kind of treats does. Up, yeah, so. you're right. So what other types of uh, dishes do people like here at Calico Cupboard? Um, they like the Linda's hash. It okay. has eggs in it and cheese. Oh, and yeah. that's also served on our red potatoes. And we have um, a Brussels sprout hash. It's really good too. What's your favorite dish? I like the veggie burgers. And the fish tacos. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and, and the desserts. And, and the coffee. <laughs> what do you like? Anything with potatoes. Yes. I'm a big potato girl. I love potatoes. I like them uh, quartered with olive oil and garlic. Oh. And bake them in the oven. Roasted potatoes, so yes. good, yeah. Come on, go ahead and stop it. Well, I can't do that. The vegetables will go flying all over the place. <laughs> You're the pro. You're the pro. <laughs> that smells amazing. That garlic and the onions. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah? <laughs> it is gonna be amazing. <laughs> it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> You can always add bacon if you want some meat or mm -hmm. some sausage in there. Everything's good with bacon. Oh yeah. Once our potatoes are golden brown, we pull them off the grill and dump our veggie mixture on top. And then go ahead and sprinkle some cheese on there. This is feta. And mozzarella. I can do that. And then we can sprinkle our pepper flakes on there. And we're that ready is, to go? That We're ready. That was so easy. Yeah, and it's going to be so good. Look what I have. Yay! You ready? I am ready. Are you ready? Yeah, let's give this a try. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. That is good. Those potatoes are perfect. And it's not too spicy with the pepper no, plate. No, so not at all. For breakfast or lunch or dinner or... Yeah, leftovers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> to get the recipe for Calgo Cupboard's Skagit Hash, visit our website at wagrone.com. I'm here with Alan Rosema. He's the executive director for Skagitonians to Preserve Farmland. Farmland. SPF. That SPF, very good. And uh, we are out in the Skagit Valley. And why are we here? We're here, we're on the southern edge of uh, the city of Mount Vernon. Uh -huh. And this is that edge between agricultural land and the municipal boundary or the city boundary. And this is an area that we've been working this I-5 corridor to preserve from urban sprawl and, and what happens in most places along Interstate 5 freeway interchanges in cities. What is the effect that urban sprawl has on farmers around here? What does it mean to them? Well, the urban sprawl drives up property values in particular and makes it harder and harder for them to pay the taxes. Once they stop growing, and the farmers start to, to leave, make the decision to sell or maybe sell their farm, then we have less farmers buying diesel, less farmers getting their tractors fixed or buying new tractors. And uh, what economists would call the multiplier effect yeah. is those dollars start leaving the area and then those implement dealers will pick up and leave. And that's what we're very worried about. And then the farmers that are left will have to call Whatcom County to get their tractor fixed or down to Oregon or somewhere else. It gets harder and harder to get the supplies and the parts they need. And again, it just comes back to the one thing that um, keeps this agricultural community viable is that farmland. That farmland gives the farmers the elasticity to respond to a lot of changes and helps keep this industry and all the components, the businesses here. Yeah. What are the benefits of, of having open space and agriculture compared to development? Farmland 
produces food and fiber as we know. And it's our domestic source of, of food. And, it's, and Skagit is a regional food shed for Seattle and beyond. But more importantly, it's providing uh, wildlife habitat Skagit County in particular has thousands of snow geese, thousands of waterfowl, ducks, uh, raptors, so we support a very strong uh, uh, birding population. Water quality benefits, it is absorbing uh, water, um, it's filtering water, it's providing that open space, habitat, and food and fiber. And doing it naturally. And doing it naturally with a little help from our farmers. Well, thank you for all the hard work that you do and for explaining a little bit more about preserving our agriculture. Thank you for coming to the Skagit, and I hope you enjoy it. your stay. beautiful here. <laughs> thank you. You know, I love red potatoes. You can cook and prepare them in so many different ways and you can have them at any time of the day. Well, I've got some incredible red potato hash browns from our friends here at the yards in Spokane and I want to see what people think about them. All right, so Brianna, do you like potatoes? I love potatoes. What do you think about red potatoes? Delicious. Yeah, what other potatoes do you like? Well, like russet for mashed potatoes or chowder. Um, Yukon Gold, of course, for scalloped. Yeah, and I like fingerling potatoes, too, oh, yes. so those are good, too. Like the purple ones mm -hmm. and all that. How often do you guys eat potatoes? Um, probably a couple times a week. A couple times a week? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, That's good. I'm a big potato yeah. person. Pretty regularly. Yeah, pretty regularly. Two or three times a yeah. week, probably. Yeah. <laughs> They're cheap and, you know, they go with everything. I like to boil them yeah. and then make them into mashed potatoes. My favorite thing to do is just kind of dice them up and throw some olive oil and salt and pepper on them. Oven roasted, Very most nice. often. What yeah. do you put on them? Um, you know, just some olive oil, some thyme. Rosemary. Turmeric. Ooh, yeah. turmeric. That's a yeah. good one. Butter. And cream. <laughs> <laughs> cream. There you go. I have some red potatoes that are prepared by the yards. Uh -huh. And I want you to give these a try. Okay. Tell me what you think. A good, kind of crispy on the outside, soft on the inside. Yeah. They're crispy and delicious. They're Freaking great! I like them. Uh, <laughs> no, I like the texture. I think they're really good. They're not too soft. Thank you so much. Yep, you're that welcome. I'm gonna keep these. So. Please do. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm visiting Ryan Hembry at Skip Rock Distillers in Snohomish to learn how they make their award-winning potato vodka. And you are one of the only people in the state that does some potato vodka. Is that right? Yeah, we're the main one. That's Correct. awesome, okay. So we're gonna learn the whole process. Absolutely, we're gonna go start to finish, grinding those potatoes, the cooking process, um, proofing it down to pour the final bottling, and, and go from there. Maybe a little taste. A little taste, just yeah. a little bit. The first step is to grind up the potatoes in a hammer mill. How many potatoes go into like, a bottle? One bottle? Yeah. With the reds, it's about 12 to 13 pounds of potatoes of for potatoes. one bottle. That's amazing. Yeah. That's a lot of potatoes. The potato mash. Kind of looks like uh, berries and cream. Next, the potatoes are pumped into a giant pot and cooked for seven to eight hours. So once it sits in the and kind of cooks. After it cooks up, we pump it into our fermentation tanks. Okay. Uh, these, are, these are great thousand liter tanks. Don't require additional cooling. So we'll go ahead and uh, it ferments in here for about four to five days. Woo. The next step is to add some water to the vodka. Just a little bit more. Perfect, that's okay. good. Okay. All right. Then we take a sample to measure the exact alcohol content. All right, this is the hydrometer. So it, it measures the density, the water, amount of water, and the amount of alcohol in, uh, in a sample. Get a little, make sure there's no air bubbles attached to it. Do you ever feel like a mad scientist? Yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah. Once the alcohol content is at 70 proof, it's ready to be distilled. So what made you decide to do potato vodka? You know, I wanted to do something different. Uh, I was getting into distilling and the, the idea of opening a, a distillery. I looked around what was in the marketplace and pretty much everything was grain vodka. A majority it's wheat and corn. Less than 1% of all the vodka in the entire world is potato. And I just wanted to create something a little different and a little unique. And we have amazing potato growers here in Washington State. 
What's the difference like in taste between a potato vodka and one that's made with, with grain or? I think for us, for me, what I get is potato vodka has a little bit more body to it. It has more flavor. Uh, it's got this, we call it creamy, earthy, sweet flavor profile. Reminiscent of that potato. We don't over distill, over process the vodka that we make. So it's got a lot of that flavor still left in. And now my favorite part of the tour, the tasting. Taste it. Um, you know, a little sip, that first sip is oftentimes going to be, you kind of get your taste buds going a little bit. Uh, and then take a second sip and you kind of chew on it a little bit. And you'll get the different flavors and everything. You don't need to swirl it like wine. That actually, it's high alcohol, so that's just going to, um, especially in these glasses, it just, it's not really needed. Yeah, very smooth. Yeah. yeah. And I think potato vodka makes a nice, really nicely smooth product. I'm here with Drew, Director of Kitchen Operations here at Second Harvest in Spokane. And we've got some pretty good looking ingredients here in front of us. What are we making today? We're going to do some red potato canapes. Okay, well let's get started because uh, I'm hungry. All right, all right. <laughs> so the first thing we do is we're going to preheat our oven to 375. So we're okay. going to turn that on right there and just get it going. And while we're doing that, um, we're going to start with our potatoes for potato canapes. So just, canapes, uh, all can right. Canapes. So we're just going to grab a couple of these. And uh, the idea here is we're going to slice them in half. And uh, also, we'll need those melon ballers right over there. And these are kind of a cool melon tool. Melon ballers. Melon ballers, yeah. We're going to use these to scoop out the inside of our potatoes uh, okay. and use that as a little vessel for our filling. And as soon as we're done, we're going to uh, put these in cold water and set them to boil. You say cold water. Tell me the reasons why we want to use cold water for this versus just getting something that's already hot. Yeah, you know, if you put them straight in boiling water, those skins are going to peel right off. And that's not going to give the appearance you want when you serve these up. Uh, so if you put them in cold water, those skins will actually stay intact uh, on the flesh of the potato, and they're going to look a lot better when they're done. Now, you know, I'm just curious, there's a lot of varieties of potatoes out there. So what makes the red potato so good for this recipe? Well, that flesh is pretty firm in these red potatoes, so it's going to hold up to that roasting. And the skin is, kind of, is a delicate flavor. It's not going to be that rough texture. It's a little smoother. Oh, we put our potatoes in the water, and while they cook, we start chopping our pre-cooked bacon and green onions. You are skillful with that knife. <laughs> I'm just hungry. I just want to get it done. <laughs> Next, Drew shows me a fun trick to quickly peel a head of garlic. Set it down and use the palm of your hand and just give it a good smash. Okay. There you go. Wow, that was awesome. Whoa, whoa. Hey. Then we'll, uh, why don't we do one more right there? Cool. And uh, just scoop all that into, uh, into your metal bowls there. Yep. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. Now uh, you've got two bowls, so you're just going to take the one out of the bottom. Okay, and give it a, a toss, huh? Yep, and just okay. give it a good shake. Oh yeah, harder, lots. You know, I get that, those ones from my mom. <laughs> Let's take a look. Good. Beautiful. All right. And it's just going to have popped most of these, if not all of them, right out. So they're super easy to peel. Perfect. Yep. And we're just going to give these a nice mince too. Okay. And after we mince the garlic, our potatoes are ready. So we drain and then rinse them. Just give them a good, uh, okay. good douse of oil there, yeah. We're just gonna give them a little, little shake around. We just kinda wanna coat them evenly. The next thing we're gonna do is just use a little Montreal steak seasoning. Oh, that stuff. Another just kind of versatile thing. Burgers, you can even put that on eggs. <laughs> you guys in the everywhere. kitchen, you always got that on hand, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll kinda shake it around. Now we're gonna put these flat side up on our baking sheet right here. Okay. Um, you don't need to do anything to it. This is a non-stick one. Perfect. Um, but we're just going to take them and set them flat side up. Let that bowl face up. Exactly. Now it's time to toss the potatoes in the oven to bake. All right, so our potato canapes are right out of the oven, and you're right, they look awesome. Oh, these are going to be fantastic. <laughs> and this is another great way to cook with your family. We've already done all the work prepping all of our uh, toppings, and so you can really get them involved, and this is the fun part anyway. Right, and you could put this in the middle of your dining room table, 
and just, just kind of have everybody build it right there as they're eating. Just build your own, yeah. And it's another great party trick. You know, if everybody wants to build their own potatoes, <laughs> your work is done. That's true. That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get, uh, let's get building here. What do we got? Right. So I told you I like these squeeze bottles. So yes. we got a little bit of sour cream in here, okay. a little bit of sriracha. Mm. Uh, love that. Um, and then all of our toppings. So what I like to do, um, and you could also use, if you don't have these bottles, is just uh, a bowl and a spoon, and that's gonna work just fine. For the sour cream. For the sour cream, okay. yep. Excellent. And uh, we're just gonna start filling up these shells with uh, everything that we like. Okay. So just a little assembly line. All right, let's get it going. All right. Let's build it. I'm gonna start with some sour cream. All right, yeah, look at that. Oh, yeah. Just a, just a little dollop. You got that bacon to use, you got those green onions, oh, I, those I, chives. It's like, where do you start? You can start anywhere. You're holding back on the bacon, I can tell. I, I'm waiting. It's kind of like, you know, you wait for that last bite. So I'm going to get everything on there to see how much room I have left to a lot for my bacon. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let's bring, let's bring the bacon in. There it is. All right. Mm. Oh, man. Yeah, this instant hit right here. Oh, man. Look at that, guys. Now, those are canapes ready to eat. Should we eat? I, we got to try this. Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice job, man. This hey, is fantastic. Cheers. Oh, mm. that crust has got a little crunch. Mm -hmm. mm. And the sriracha sauce just adds a nice little punch. Mm. Oh, that's delicious. They're easy to make and delicious. Yeah, thank you. This is great. To get Drew's red potato canapé recipe, just head over to our website at wagrown.com. The rich, nutritious soil in the Skagit Valley helps us grow many bountiful crops, including the best red potatoes in the world. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. Thanks for watching.